Good evening, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed yesterday's program on acupressure, Ayurvedic acupressure from Prayagraj. The, uh, the director of that institute brought us a lot of new uh, divisions and the magnanimity and the, uh, the field, the way it is uh, getting into scientific realm and healthcare. And I hope also recall Rudra Bhandari's uh, University of Patanjali's talk on yoga personality. So uh, today is another day, another weekend. Uh, I hope you're having a great weekend at your home. And uh, today we are joined by a person from the technology. And this is our second technology uh, guest after we got Rich uh, Fletcher from MIT. And we are joined by uh, Dr. Professor T.G. Sitharam, who's the director at the Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. Thank you to Dr. Dr. Sitharam for joining us. He will be speaking to us all uh, on resilience and transformation in healthcare and emerging areas in the future. And uh, in this narration, in his talk, he will talk about the contribution of IIT Guwahati to good health and well being of Northeast India. It is so, uh, we are so delighted to uh, have you with us and to uh, particularly note that you are interested, IIT Guwahati is interested in foraying into the area of healthcare, which is so uh, nice and euphoric for all of us because we are a group of healthcare workers and uh, scientists, biologists, uh, yoga charyas, Ayurveda charyas, Ayush people. We have 11,300 um, uh, subscribers and in last uh, 138 days, we've been doing uh, interrupt uninterrupted uh, educational series, which has uh, cumulative views about 1.5 million reaching out to Latin America, US, Europe, in addition to our Indian viewers. So today being a weekend, it's a peak hour. I'll uh, formally introduce Professor Sitaram, who is the director, as I mentioned, of IIT Guwahati. He was also a senior professor. He, his extraction is Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. He uh, was a senior professor there at the Department of Civil Engineering. And he was formerly also chair professor in the area of energy and mechanical sciences at ISC Bangalore. And uh, also former founder chairman of the Center of Infrastructure, uh, Sustainable Transport and Urban Planning at ISC Bangalore. So he has uh, really rich uh, academic credentials coming from ISC Bangalore and having, having headed a couple of departments, being a senior professor, is now joined as the uh, director of IIT Guwahati. He is presently also on many international panels, such as uh, University of Wollongong as the professor, visiting honorary professor, distinguished professor at uh, China University, Hankou University, a prestigious university there. Uh, he is also a chairman of uh, the research council at IIT Roorkee, one of the uh, Central Building Research Institute there in IIT Roorkee, also the executive uh, council on many of the, uh, and the governing council, many of the national councils for science museums. So it appears that he has some artistic interest in bringing up our historical, the history of science and engineering up to the, to the forefront. He's been president to the International Association Coastal Reservoir Research, registered at the NSW, in uh, Australia, president of Indian Society of Earthquake Technology, coming from civil engineering. He obviously has interest in Earthquake Management. He is also the chairman AICT Southwestern Zonal Committee, Regional Office of Bengaluru. Formerly, he was also a professor at the Dalhousie University of Canada, Yamaguchi University of Japan, and the Indian, Institute of, uh, Indian School of Mines that you all know, IIT, ISM, Dhanbad, and a William Wong Fellow at the University of Hong Kong. He obtained his PhD civil engineering from University of Wollongong in um, Ontario, Waterloo. And he served as a research scientist uh, for his postdoctoral work at the Center of Earth Sciences. So all along, he has been a, a earthquake specialist, a civil engineer, bringing in a lot of administrative and uh, decision-making skills, being in serving in different committees from Bangalore, IIC Bangalore to IIT Roorkee. And uh, apparently he's playing a lead role and I'm sure IIT Guwahati is in very safe hands, especially when he talks about the healthcare. And uh, today he's going to be talking about resilience and transformation in health. Can I believe, and I suspect, I, I'm not privy to his talk, but Presumably, he will talk to us a little bit about the role of technology. Maybe, I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, welcome, Dr. Sitaram, to our program. And we look forward to uh, hearing from you. And from now on, I'll just uh, switch off my video, but I'll be there listening to you. And you can play your slides or share slides is all active. Welcome, sir. Can you see my slides? Yeah, these are coming up. Yeah, it's all ready to go, sir. Great. Namaskar. Thank you very much uh, for uh, PGICT to welcome me for this group. And I hope uh, I will try to do justice to what we are contributing 
in the area of healthcare, particularly IIT Guwahati is the sixth IIT. It started in 1994. So we are not the second generation IIT, but we are in the trans transformation from first generation to second generation because we are the only IIT started in 1994 and then IIT Roorkee in 2000. Uh, it was Roorkee University became uh, IIT Roorkee. And then uh, all the second generation IITs like Gandhinagar, Ropar, and all those things started. And then third generation was started from 2010, like Darwad and then uh, other younger ones. So today we have 23 IITs in the country. So let me not waste uh, my time in that. Let me directly take you to today's uh, talk. I'm gonna to talk to you on resilience and transformation in healthcare, emerging areas for the future. And particularly I'm going to first initial slides of mine would be how the Gawati uh, contributed to this uh, Good health and well-being, particularly during this COVID-19 time. Okay. So COVID-19 is a pandemic which all of us are still facing, and that's why I think most of us are logging into our online classes, webinars, or skill-based learning because otherwise none of uh, none of us would have been on these online platforms earlier. I think all of you agree with me on that, but today. There is such a, uh, I gave a, about a month or two months back, I gave a talk on water because that's my area, water and geotechnical. And uh, there were more than thousand people attending uh, on water, which is <laughs> unimaginable to me because whenever we give a talk in civil engineering, maybe hundred people, 50 people used to be there. So today the technology has really helped us. So COVID-19 coronavirus, which is a, as we all know that I don't need to introduce to this audience, it's a bigger particle under nanometer. And last five months, about more than about close to about 20 million people have been affected. And more than 700,000 uh, deaths have happened across the world. But coming to India, we have done reasonably well. You know, we, even though we have about 2 million cases and every day, the number of cases coming up is increased. That is also because of the testing. And uh, we have about uh, 42,500 deaths so far, which is actually the lowest among all the countries in the world. <clears throat> so how many countries have affected? You can see that 183 plus countries have been affected. So, but uh, what is interesting is about 60, more than 68% have been recovered all over uh, India, which is a very good thing. So it is the mortality rate is uh, reasonably very, very low, uh, particularly in India. And this was one of the biggest challenges to the humanity post World War II. Okay. And uh, then it was preceded by SARS, MARS, and Nipah, and Ebola, and all that, you know, you are very familiar. So COVID 19 coronavirus, uh, which was disease. Uh, the virus strain is a severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2. The first case appeared in Wuhan, China, December 1st, 2019. Then WHO declares COVID-19 as a pandemic on March 11th, 2020. So this uh, declaration, by that time, there were a lot of deaths, please remember, across uh, the world. But in India, uh, was not much actually, not even uh, very few cases. But IIT Guwahati decided to close down before even government of India announced it. On 25th of March, if you, all of you remember, 25th of March, government of India announced. And we took a very bold decision and uh, closed down much before even the government announced it. Okay, March 15th, and all our students, almost 6,000 plus students, left the campus, went to their homes. I decided they should go home because, uh, you know, it's very difficult to uh, keep them because without affecting the COVID and it was such a scary thing. And today, if I look back, I think we have done a fantastic decision and we are very happy. All faculty are very happy with the decision what we took that day. That day, many, many, were, many were skeptical. Many even called me and said, sir, why are you doing this? I, anyway, I had my senior uh, administrators with me and they're all, we all together took a decision. So we are, firm on the decision and by 18th, almost 6,000 people vacating from a campus. It's not easy 
particularly from northeast please remember so trains buses but the day what we did after 25th if it has happened after 25th there was nothing we could do you know some institution had students and they had a lot of problems so we had after sending all our students please remember iit guwahati is having about 6500 to 6700 students in the campus and uh, and about uh, close to 10000 population in campus 700 acres on the banks of mighty brahmaputra we are only half a kilometer or like one kilometer away from brahmaputra banks so we have about 700 and 700 acres very green lush green with uh, many small small hills in between and a valley also uh, the mean sea level we are only 50 meter above the mean sea level uh, so you can imagine the very green very beautiful and uh, uh, today it has uh, rained uh, like cats and dogs from the morning so uh, you can see 80% of the uh, assam is underwater including lot of villages towns and but our campus if you come not even one road is underwater so this beautifully done fantastic drainage one of the best iit campuses in the country i'm very proud to say because i am actually an outsider earlier i come from indian institute of science 27 years in bangalore and which is also a beautiful campus but i found the iit guwahati campus is much more greener and much more better in the in terms of because it's a younger it's only 25 years we are celebrating the 25th year this year that means we have we started in 1994 and all of you know that this iit guwahati was completely indigenously done by indian government uh, on the request of asu that is uh, some students union request to quell their uh, you know agitation this was announced in 1984 and then came up in 1995 and uh, uh, 95 94 actually september 1st is our foundation day and then uh, 95 we started our programs so and we moved to the campus sometime in uh, 99 98 99 on the banks of northern part it we are on the northern part of guwahati city it is about 25 kilometers so we had two chances after we sending our all our students because i just wanted to remind you we are still 4000 population live in the campus including the faculty and family the more than 450 faculty with 11 departments and centers we have we, we are not just the engineering school we have a humanities biology is very strong chemistry is very strong you will see soon and uh, <clears throat> physics department is excellent because 40 faculty are there in all our, all of these 11 departments we have a very large number of faculty working in the main core areas and five uh, interdepartmental centers uh, like uh, center for environment center for energy and uh, and many other five other uh, departments which are service departments so we had two choices at that time to remain silent witness to the nature's uh, the deadly uh, pandemic but iit guwahati we chose to act what do we do so this is actually a covid 19 report from times of india and is also you can see this list of project even iit council website in delhi so we could see the each iit started working very seriously with the uh, the present uh, faculty faculty himself got into uh, from their ideas to products see so during this we more than money what was they were asking me is sir can we get some phd student can we get the post doctoral we have all sent home so we had about 30 international student 35 international students on campus another uh, married students about 70 80 and some other students about 10 20 so there totally about 130 students were also <coughs> in the campus during this pandemic the whole pandemic period so you could see that we actually led in among the projects whether it is personal protective care equipments testing kits sensitization medical equipments surveillance treatment pharmacological non pharmacological data analysis i will anyway show you some of those uh, uh, things uh, soon to you but what i was trying to tell you is we were actually almost 34 projects leading among all the iits see the iit kharagpur madras bombay delhi we have led in the shortest period of time we had more than 34 projects this is some time in may june i'm talking about june and uh, we had uh, close to i mean uh, about 30 to 40 crores of uh, worth of uh, project we did and very interesting to tell you 
that large number of collaborations have happened with industries and many industry came and established in our research park. To be precise, about eight industries have come and started their operation during the pandemic at IIT Guwahati to start producing jointly some of the products which I'm going to show you in the next slide. So we, are, we started working on uh, starting, I will start telling you about the vaccine itself. See, we had, I will show you some more details. We, we, are, we have worked on innovative, affordable healthcare solution, and particularly making India to Atman uh, self-reliant India, in terms of uh, the medical instruments, medical equipments, and other you know, devices. And future-ready healthcare systems, we started our faculty, started working. It all happened during COVID-19. Doesn't mean that it just happened like that, but they were working, so they were able to turn their ideas into products immediately because there were no the students, there were no nothing to teach. So three, four months this put. So we started working on vaccine and we have even jointly signed an MOU with uh, Gujarat-based uh, uh, Hester Biosciences uh, for a vaccine development, which is going on very well now, right now, but we are not like some other companies where we are already ready to uh, for uh, human trials. We are still animal trials are going on. And uh, we have developed robots, ventilators, UV LED, uh, the ultraviolet LED uh, based uh, disinfection, uh, you know, or sanitization things, PPE kits for patient care, and in house PTM kits, RNA kits, RT PCR kits were developed, intubation boxes for safe patients. Our students actually have done a fantastic job. This is a student who worked together. I'll show you the pictures. And then our alumni is an ex expert in drones, you know, we have started. And we, uh, even our faculty also, many of them and students are also, so drone developed uh, for disinfections. 3D printed a full head gear mask and software for contactless air travel. And you can see the variety of projects our faculty and students have involved for the healthcare initiative during the pandemic. So let me take you through a couple of them. You see, coming to the vaccine and early diagnosis initiative IIT Guwahati, a recombinant vaccine against COVID-19 is a faculty of Sachin Kumar, who is actually in biosciences, bioengineering. Mm, yeah. And uh, he developed a vaccine candidate based on the recombinant vaccine against COVID-19. He was working on SARS earlier, so it was very easy for him to pursue. And then understanding the basically the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 for identifying the biomarker against its infection and uh, they were identifying some unique markers for diagnosis of COVID-19. And then uh, they were also looking at development of peptide-based ELISA for the detection of SARS-CoV-2 from the serum samples. So they were identifying important areas in the protein that could be useful for the vaccine development. Then one important thing, uh, some of you may be very uh, keen to look at the Indian you know, knowledge, that is the GILOI uh, against influenza and other related respiratory viruses, antiviral efficacy of GILOI. So they were trying to look at that Ayurvedic formulation of the GILAI for COVID-19 under the respiratory pathogens. So this uh, team is a quite large team, actually. More than 40 faculty are there in bioscience and bioengineering, one of the best departments uh, in IIT Guwahati. So another team of professors from uh, biology as well as chemistry have then developed our own kits, VTM kits approved by ICMR and validated by Gawati Medical College. I didn't tell you one more thing. When, this 13th of March, 15th itself, Gawati Medical College approached us, sir, we do not have RT-PCR machines. Whatever we had, it is not broken down. We never even tried to use it earlier. So can you lend us? So immediately we sent three RT-PCR machines from our department directly to Gawati Medical College Hospital because uh, so that you know we could help the, uh, the Assam to fight the it was very early period, March, uh, second week of March I'm talking about. So. Uh, but now we have manufactured more than one lakh uh, VTM kits. Basically, this is the swab collecting. Some of you will understand. I don't need to explain. The pictures are very clear. The, the split is the, the group of the people, faculty, uh, Professor Parameshwar Ayer and uh, SS Ghosh, Siddharth Shankar Ghosh, and uh, that, that is the name of the team, split, S-P-I-L-D, split. And uh, this vital viral transport medium kit, VTM kits, more than one lakh kits we have given it to. You can see uh, Dr. Himanta Vishwasharma, he himself is a doctor and also the health minister of the Assam government launched this very early in the month of uh, May or June. Uh, and uh, we have basically, they have given us the order directly to IIT Guwahati. 
we are manufacturing and supplying to them. And now we have also ready RT, QPCR, and RNA isolation kits are also ready. And uh, they, we are awaiting approval from the ICMR. And then these are very sterile, high quality, and affordable. And we were actually, we had costed 50% of the cost of what Assam government procured from uh, Chinese companies or even uh, uh, other companies in India. So they were so happy. Uh, 195 rupees VTM kits uh, and completely packaged with IIT Guwahati emblem. Okay, like COVID-19 or an isolation kit. And this is the this is the box which you are going to see. I hope you can see my uh, mouse. Uh, this is the box which uh, yes, is the, Yeah, good, thank you. So this uh, VTM kits, these are the VTM kits. You can see the IIT Guwahati with an emblem we try to sell it to the government. So this was a fantastic attempt in Atmani Bharat beyond. And uh, this uh, COVID-19 kits manufactured in Assam state, we projected that. So this is the first IIT to launch COVID-19 kits in the market, uh, much uh, before than uh, IIT Delhi actually. But IIT Delhi went into RT-PCR kits, but our RT-PCR kits are still waiting to get permission from the, <laughs> uh, approved by the ICMR. But, uh, but I would like to say Assam was very, very proactive. Assam government adopted our RT-PCR kit uh, because they saw there is no more danger. So they started using that. So we did this, our faculty, Professor Ayer and Shankar, Siddhartha Shankar Ghosh, uh, did it with RR Animal Healthcare Limited, which is a Hyderabad-based company. Now they have started an operation in the IIT Guwahati Research Park. Then, you know, our very early, in the March second week itself, uh, Supradeep Das started printing three uh, face masks, face shields, and uh, it's a prototype. And then he signed up an MOU with some company locally, uh, some SME company, and supplied the kits, these uh, face shields and masks, both of them. You can see. And first he gave it to all our security at the gate, and then then he supplied it to Apollo Hospital, SBI, Save Bank of India, Save of Save of Bharati Puranchal, Railway Hospital, and all Narayana Sports Specialty, all of them. This is completely manufactured in, in, you see, mass production started in 1st May, very early. On 15th, this, uh, this autoclave mobile also, initial production started with 3D printing, and now we signed up with MOU with uh, the local uh, SMEs. Then affordable antimicrobial spray coating. This is a very unique product, and a very cheap. Professor Biman Mandal of the Antin from uh, Bioscience Bioengineering, it's a spray. So when you spray this, and it is uh, protects from the uh, COVID or any kind of uh, viruses on the surface. That means you can make your PPE kit reusable, you see, or uh, even your face masks reusable from outside. So this is the coated mask and the uncoated mask. It's a very, very cheap product. And today, four companies have signed to manufacture across India because it has applications in many areas. Paint, for example, Berger Paints has bought our uh, license, uh, I mean, technology transfer, and uh, it's a revenue model for the IIT Guwahati as well, first time. Virtual Paints is a huge company. Now they would like to use it in the outside area of painting so that, you know, this uh, uh, viruses will not stick and also will not survive on that. So this is, a, it kills the microbes on the coated surface. This is a very unique product, microbes on PPE surface, and its spraying is also very simple, very easy. Is a metal nanoparticle spray actually. It's a basically a very simple metal nanoparticle spray. It is very cheap actually. And more details, you please contact Professor Neman Mandal. I'll give you the contact if somebody is interested to manufacture because they are not giving you, uh, they are actually distributing the license. Uh, any company can manufacture in India. We have also moved into robots, ventilator, autoclave, or mechanical engineering team has done a fantastic job. Even for example, uh, I don't know whether I have a picture here. This is a robot. This is the robot where, you know, it's a remote control operated. It can move into the hospital wards by itself. So it can carry food, medicine, water, and uh, all of the necessary things, you know, physical, no physical contact. So it can be controlled by just a remote control like a, uh, like a child's play. And then the same thing was uh, drug and food carrying unit. We have made a different version now, which is going to other Dibrugarh Hospital and other hospitals. And then high capacity autoclave was also manufactured in the, in the peak period of the COVID-19. 
and there are many other mask making machines by the uh, mechanical engineering department and shower for disinfection and the hospital bed using bamboo based you know very cheap bamboo based hospital bed so we saw our uh, design department is a very unique department in the uh, is a very early design department in the country and uh, we actually based on our site bombay has actually started the design department much later our design group is a fantastic the head of the department is the person who has designed our rupee symbol for india okay that kind of uh, unique designs we have faculty who are talented very talented faculty a mechanical ventilator also was been manufactured by our uh, which is cost less than 1 lakh rupees and emergency respiratory disorders and then uh, you know and uh, our student team again this is amazing uh, young uh, students of btech you know a flizzy app apparatus one app for all air travel needs contactless airport shopping smart assistant contactless passenger processing contactless airport booking they have discussed with uh, many of the airports and started working and it is a class cross platform android uh, ios and all wearable lightweight easy easy to encrypt by air approaching fantastic students uh, startup has done this student startup is flyzy app it's called then you know we have a, another student group umbatu is a fourth year bsb student as intubation box just a box so that you know doctor will not directly come in contact with the thing this is also fantastic innovation uh, uh, this is our alumni prem kumar iit alumni prem kumar uh, oops sorry yeah who is uh, actually running the marot drones a company startup company he is our uh, he picked up actually in our uh, iitg clubs initially but today uh, it's a very sort well well sort after and we are also now uh, thinking of starting a drone technology center very unique center and we are thinking one more idea which i would love to share is we are thinking of even operating drones like uber <laughs> a service to pick up you know uh, the vegetables and other because we would like to scale up this to go up to 100 kg so right now about 15 kg or maximum 10 kg can be carried but we are thinking of going up to 100 kg so that we can uh, use in the hilly areas instead of any road technology when the roads are there particularly during flood season assam is very very difficult to reach so at that time these vegetables and other fresh uh, green pulses and other things can be carried by drones so we thought that we will look at a new out of the box idea like a uber service uh, we can run drone services so but anyway that's still on the plan but right now the areas are movement tracking eyes in the sky surveillance thermal analysis disinfection sanitization and uh, medical delivery of critical supplies all can be done it has been done it is not just theory it has been done by the hyderabad based bar drones who was our alumni so we also initially started a covid 19 grant challenge for students and uh, on all different topic whether it is detection of infected person behavioral changes migration of humans and all these you know we got more than 70 new ideas and we even selected them best and now they are been mentored by the faculty of iit guwahati and all these grant challenges was only for our students phd students and tech students because we were they were at home so we wanted to keep them occupied thinking and uh, when they, when when they were idle you know it's the devil's mind is the best so i thought we should occupy them with something creative and that's how we created this and we gave prizes you know 10000 rupees for about 10 to 12 projects very early we started the online yoga classes in the morning every day it is happening without fail that is iit which is we had actually a good uh, yoga classes uh, instructors three of them in the campus itself and uh, they were teaching physically earlier but once the students gone away we started doing the yoga online classes for improving mental health and we also our uh, one of the alumni uh, has started a company called uh, your dost this your dost is in many of the educational institution helping on the mental health so the, this your dost the ceo is iit guwahati design student the btex design student who is an alumni and started this company as a in the technology incubation hub initially and then now it is an independent company sourcing connecting to 10000 doctors and uh, she is also uh, helping iit guwahati students during this pandemic uh, on the improving the mental health there are a good number of students and faculty and even families are accessing this online is completely online 
and it also gives you privacy so that you know they don't hesitate they will not be knowing whom they who which doctor they could talk to you you, you can also uh, keep your uh, names and other things privately as long as you logged into that system so it it really opened up many of the so we could identify some critical cases then you know just wanted to highlight to you the covid 19 media coverage the media coverage this is sometime in july uh, the total coverage was almost 833 print online electronic and tv 17 professors connected with the media directly because even bbc came to your campus during this pandemic and interviewed some of the technology one of the unique technology by it gavati is also which i'm not i did not cover here is on um, bioplastic manufacturing of bioplastics based on the agri based uh, polymers so there are more than 506 news items iit guwahati in the headlines in the both the national and the regional uh, new media so the lessons from the crisis for us communication and transparency controlling the level of restrictions self distancing contact tracing and uh, i did not talk about some of those other technologies which were developed because to keep the time so that uh, you know otherwise it will go on early and mass testing flexible and rapid response universal health coverage and financing learning from the past helping the infected while protecting the non infected so covid 19 lessons i think very early the whole world learned from south korea i don't need to tell to this community but india has done well in dealing with covid 19 pending dr pradhan or honorable health minister clearly highlighted uh the some time in may middle may 18th up to 20 so this is all because of the early and mass testing flexible rapid response and uh, what i'm going to take you through now is my vision plan for iit gwati how we are going to move so the global healthcare system if you look at it is fundamentally changing because of technology assisted uh, the healthcare is coming in so some of the uh, technology assisted techno technologies i just showed you earlier that's only during covid 19 because there are many other please remember our faculty are very innovative and uh, very active so there are more than 450 i did not, i cannot show you everything in this 30 minutes advances in technology new entrants from outside the industry changing the consumer expectations are driving driving a global shift in the healthcare landscape same time chronic diseases social determinant and resource, and resource limitation continue to add pressure these powerful forces are pushing traditional models of care delivery healthcare companies face a choice either transform to be part of the future or risk, risk being left behind so they have to tie up with the educational institution of higher learning and new ideas young people like be our btech graduates for starting up many of the new ideas so they have to tie up and, and catch them young and start doing this thing so the, the transformation of healthcare has to have happen and it has to be consumer centric focus shift to preventive and out outcome based care models embrace digital and technology enablers or engage non traditional value chain partners drive improvements to access quality and affordability of the care india as you know i don't need to tell to this audience again is a shortage of 600000 doctors almost 2 million nurses are shortage 65% of the healthcare expenditure is out of the pocket from the individuals and such expenditure push some 57 million people into poverty each year so one government doctor for every 10000 people that's a very very low you know uh, ratio the world health organization recommends a ratio of 1 is to 1000 but we are 1 is to 10000 or a deficit of 600000 doctors the pharma industry however is completely reversed we are the pharma for the whole world pharma industry in india is a leading producer of cost effective and quality controlled generic drugs india supplies around 20% of the global pharmaceuticals demand in terms of volume so this is the numbers which i have given you but i am not going to go through that so let me take you to the iit guwahati see we have done reasonably well this year we are on the nir ranking 7th both in engineering and overall and uh, swachhata ranking as i told you our campus is there one of the beautiful campuses is the third and first among the centrally funded technical institute in the qs world ranking in 2021 we are the only iit jumped 20, 21 ranks we were 491 less than 500 in the world and 2470 and iit guwahati has improved 71.2 marks in the year 2020 global rank to 77.9 in 2021 was global rank of 55 89 55 hacker rank first asia pacific region and problem solving category we are the uh, hacker rank 2019 nature index has actually put us very high uh, 20th in the top 20 50 young universities in chemistry 
2023 50th overall world rank and we are number 6 jumped from 10th in 2019 5th in chemistry 9th in life sciences 7th in physical sciences that actually speaks volumes about iit guwahati please remember my stay is only from 2009 july at iit guwahati that means they have really built it up very well and an artist is only one iit in all the seven states plus even in yard sikkim eight states there is only one iit so science journal nature has identified the top 10 institution iit guwahati ranks third in india uh, in citation per faculty our citation per faculty is higher next to only indian institute of science number 1 number 2 is iit gurki no other iits are there because their average citation per faculty is less than ours so innovation incubation and translation for growth of iit guwahati is the mantra so we thought you know during this pandemic many of our faculty thought about it part of starting school of health sciences and technology at iit guwahati jointly working with other you know doctors and hospitals in in the area uh, we have put up a proposal and uh, looking at how to really address the ecosystem of healthcare and uh, promise to be better readiness for future challenges like covid-19 so we have to improve the healthcare system this has come with a vision that we have to ramp up the existing infrastructure increase the skilled healthcare personnel and boost rural health and public health systems empower life sciences research inculcate the precision manufacturing skills so these all these are essential because of the population growth rate of implementation employment opportunities migrant labor multidisciplinary translation r and d is the focus of many of the institutions in the country our new education policy 2020 also talks about multidisciplinary so we were actually a little ahead of them in the uh, moving into the multidisciplinary uh, area so education leading to employment we are our focus is actually to generate a skilled manpower so many of our students actually starts learning about uh, startups and then venture all that very very early in the career in the first year itself so to also we are the first iit to look at sustainable development goals we have introduced for the third year btech students an sdg goal uh, course an undergraduate course compulsory course okay undergraduate course it has been taught by nine different department faculty nine like can you imagine nine department faculty and a very unique we wanted to bring sdg goals direct to uh, evaluate the impact of research that means how the research is impacted on the local community and uh, the surrounding areas whether it is in the area of water or in the poverty alleviation or any of those things so you can see how iit guwahati has a multidisciplinary research translation whether it is industrial research sustenance activist policy of government of india fundamental research or contribution to society and academics and our vision is so when we have we would like to actually start a, a school for health sciences and technology and uh, iit guwahati was our tower of excellence because we were already uh, ranking very high and only iit in the northeast but we wanted to move from tower of excellence to the network of excellence so after i joined we have signed mous with all the nits and all the universities around and started interacting very closely whether it is a dst csir funded csir institutions in the northeast we have an mou we have signed more than 20 and more mous in the last one year to work closely and allow them to do joint degree program and i have also suggested a joint degree program between other iits so that you know which can be also very useful so we have started uh, discussing with iit bhu and iit roorkee to start joint degree programs there both iits together can award degrees so that you know students can spend some time in each of the iits like other than the international university we are the first iit to have a joint degree program with uh, gifu in japan where the president of the gifu science along with the director of iit got the science of the degree certificates it's a completely very unique program we have created where students spend half of their term both mtech and phd half of the time we have started programs in mtech and phd in four disciplines and all of that is very quite useful so coming to the why iit got for a school of health sciences and technology because we had a very good uh, curriculum and uh, modern teaching techniques and student projects very early so real techno medical challenges of india could be addressed by our young people so that you know from engineering going into medical side so we thought medical electronics and other areas could be it, 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 a multidisciplinary research for translation 
So to prepare the ecosystem to simulate some of these principles of the innovative assessment system, fostering evidence-based research, all that. So we wanted to uh, create actually an infrastructure. So I will not much spend much time because I've taken enough of my time now. So I think let me try to conclude some of those in two, three slides. So we actually looked at Harvard, MIT Health Sciences and Systems Technology uh, to follow our prepare our uh, proposal. So we thought we will have a network of he, he, he health clinics run by health workers and uh, reach out to villages. I'll show you in the next slide what we have done in that direction. So it's an incubation center for healthcare startups promoting Make in India and simulation center. We are also training the paramedical people with our new tools, what we have developed so that you know we can reach to the large number of people. We, in, the, in the future, we are thinking of maybe having either tie up with a 750 bed uh, hospital or start our own if uh, government permits us. But this is a very uh, vision, visionary uh, plan, but still we have not yet looked at starting a medical college and other things we might work with and maybe do MD program, uh, starting with a, a sandwich program between engineering and a medical school, uh, trying to go to medical college or something else. We are still debating and talking to the meeting. So we would like to reach out uh, basically to the, if you look at the, you see primary care is very key. 60% is primary care, secondary care is 30%. So we would like to basically look at the primary case at all the villages, rural e-health clinics. That's our goal. How do we do that? Then we have to develop some of the techniques, tools. So mobile di diagnostic van. And I wanted to say here very, very uh, happily that uh, <coughs> DBT with several other private companies are giving us a mobile diagnostic van completely ready hopefully we'll be receiving in next month for dedicating to the Northeast for testing and all kind of a reach, reaching out and networking thing. So we would like to look at financially sustainable telemedicine healthcare with quality education, rural entrepreneurship, health data analysis, frontline workers. That is what our School of Health Sciences is planning to look at with startups and industry R&D. But we would like to also have a paramedical school on one side and primary health centers on the other side, uh, almost touching into 100 units going into the nitty gritty, uh, the push and pull of R&D activities into villages of our Northeast. So this is our concept of the Indian Smart Villages 2020 with this uh, kind of a healthcare and IIT being there, which can create a, with a rural entrepreneurship and education and healthcare and employment for almost at six lakh villages. In our entire country, we can look at it, a startup at a school of health science and technology, primary health center and the paramedical school, and local businesses will tie up with all that. So automatically this will be a food, energy, healthcare nexus. So this is actually prepared by IIT Guwahati team. I will not get into the details who did it and all that. So these are the, our team. Uh, you can see professors from chemistry, biology and electronics and uh, mechanical are all here. We also tied up with some physicians, entrepreneurs, okay? And uh, the person, Dr. Sartadal Saha is the one who started in IIT Karakpur. So we, he has actually given us a lot of new ideas for us. He was a medical facility, director of medical facility in IIT Karakpur. Now he is helping us. We have uh, still uh, to make a good beginning there. So this is what uh, our nanoscience uh, is, uh, an honorable uh, state minister of MHRD is here. Uh, sorry, Ministry of Education now and uh, funding almost uh, 60 crores from IT and we are fabricating, uh, I mean, with a clean room and all that, you know, we have and about 48 prototypes have been generated. I'll show you some of the pictures of them. We have 11 international patents have been filed, the national, and we have published quite a large number of publications only from that center. And Manpower is about 50 PhDs are working in that center. And uh, there are many uh, partners, commercial club. Some of the emerging products we can see uh, this is one of our alumni who started a startup there, you know, uh, is a primary health tech private limited uh, for IIT Guwahati and uh, POCT devices for the rural health, you know, affordable tests for low cost device, portable and easy to use. They're all ready actually. IOT enabled more than 25 tests integrated in one unit, single reader device. And uh, these sensors are from alpha amylis, lipase, bilberin, albumin serum, creatine serum, urine samples, Parkinson lung infection, all, all can be done in this small unit, which costs, you see, magic, we call it the magic box, 
you can see the cost of test will drop down to 2050 so that we can reach to the villages in a mass way. So this is the infrastructure is not required, instant result, less than two minutes, small sample size, handheld, robust, and ease of fabrication, IoT enabled. See, when compared to the existing POC solution and clinical devices, this has a fantastic uh, application. We are actually going big in this direction. We are also, our team is also doing that school for skills in healthcare technology. So these tools, we are training uh, the paramedical technicians with the JSV, jointly with JSV Innovation Private Limited. You can see that within local, with local language, we are teaching at IIT Guwahati is a training center. Honorable Minister, State Minister of MHRD is witnessing that uh, uh, the school which was inaugurated. So with this technology and healthcare record, you know, Professor uh, Dr. Sardar Dal Saha, who was the director of IIT Karatpur Medical School, he is also trying to help us. We have not yet formally uh, had him in our team, but he is very generous and he's trying to help us to look at the way community health workers, how to integrate with the, uh, the health clinics. So the telemedicine, some of the faculty are working in telemedicine and uh, we thought that healthcare delivery, including last mile population is the key for us with the medical and allied education and research integration, physical and technology in life sciences. So this is the proposed ecosystem we are looking at. IIT Guwahati translating skilled entrepreneurs, startups and R&D, and server health data collection and storage analysis. I can tell you, we are also getting uh, 650 teraflop supercomputer at IIT Gauti. This is the second one. We had already having 250 teraflop. This is the second one. Large number of uh, supercomputer users also there in the campus working on a lot of data. We run a very unique data science master's program uh, from Tripoli and computer science and maths together and a very unique program. So this uh, healthcare solution for urban to rural India has to be translated. Without that, our uh, new healthcare health, multidisciplinary research should deliver this translation and the interaction between doctors, engineers, students, and scholars should happen. And with frequent exchange visits, we have surrounded by two, three good hospitals already. Narada is there, and then uh, JMRC is there, and Bhagavati Medical College is also nearby. So, and also we have a very good industry startup as I told you, we have a research park funded by MHRD. So productization, commercialization, sustainability with rapid ethical clearance clinical. We have an animal facility uh, in uh, Maipur Guwahati. We are also trying to create one in our BSCBED. So this is my last but one slide. Healthcare of the future, 600 million smartphone users are there in 2020 already, likely to be almost 900 million by 2022. With lower than ever data of RFs and increasing smartphone rentals in the country, internet consumption is clearly in the rise in India. Leapfrogging technologies, mobile-based, tech-based healthcare system with nano and miniature sensors, what I showed you, developed by our faculty and students, are going to be the life-changing change, experiences for in medical healthcare. The lifestyle changes leading to increase in chronic diseases require such an intervention, otherwise we'll not be able to reach to the common man. Mobile health-based systems, almost 450 startups have already emerged in the country offering digitized health solutions for more than 500 million people who cannot afford healthcare in India. So last, some facts is about the COVID-19. Please stop panicking and help the affected. Because if I would like to show you number of deaths in the world from March to May 2020, 3,14,000 coronavirus. But you look at the common cold has killed more than that. And 5,58 by the alcohol. And even during this pandemic, between March to May, road accidents have killed more than the coronavirus. So why are you so much scared, worried about? But at the same time, we cannot neglect. And let's take only one day, May 1st of 2020, COVID-19 took lives of 6,406 6, 6, in the world, in the world, not India. So 26,283 people died of cancer on that day. And 24,000 died of heart disease. So you see any number you look at it, I think this is very ridiculous. If you do contact coronavirus, Still, there is a not cause for panic because 81% of the cases are mild, 14% cases are moderate, only 5% cases are critical. SARS had a fatality rate of 10% actually. SARS is the earlier one. Swine flu had 28% mortality, while COVID-19 has a mortality rate of 2%. But anyway, all these are statistics. But what I'm trying to say is the biggest virus is not coronavirus, but the fear of it. That is why we are all stuck at home. Stop panicking and help the affected and move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that inspiring and moving and very uh, captivating talk. Would you mind? Uh, 
I'm sharing the slide so you can come in the middle of the screen. That is good. Thank you. Thanks uh, for inspiring everybody. And uh, we really hope that your Eliza kit uh, receives the necessary approval given the big gambit of solutions and products that you told us about. And we also hope that you have realized that you start a school of health system. And we hope that we are able to contribute with our um, huge uh, expert uh, networking on your uh, school of health. And because it is going to be, its success is going to be determined by the foundation you lay for it, the educational uh, ground that you lay for it, the degree system where your uh, fine faculty and BTEC students are able to get a peep into medical system. If there is a bridge course that I had to cut it through, uh, presumably doing something, or you can yourself do with some hospitals like PGI or AIMS who can put together a framework of MD PhD program or even a PhD MD program so that this particular technology is rolled out for the benefit of our people. I have a small question if you may allow me to on behalf of the Facebook users and our experts. Uh, since you uh, emphasized a lot on e-health and because you also uh, mentioned IOP and the mobile vans and uh, all this is going to be presumably going to be based on the internet connectivity and the more, the speed with which we are able to deliver these services. And they'll be also, also based on routers that we will use, the Wi-Fi connection like we are using now. Uh, a thought just comes to my mind, even though I'm a scientist and not an engineer like you, is the fact that, uh, you know, we rely on, uh, what is it, ETZ or TP-Link or, uh, you know, the routers that are mostly imported. Is IIT Bharti also thinking of uh, doing something for the routers for telemedicine you mentioned? Yeah, our uh, team in Tripoli is already working. Okay, even some people are working uh, in 5G as well. Okay. But uh, right now, I don't, I, I, I'm not seen any products coming out from there yet okay, in that direction. But I will tell you, but reaching out uh, is not a big challenge. You know, you might have seen now online education. We thought that we were the only IIT completed the, uh, the on, all examination online. And can you know, you may not believe it. Uh, one, some of the courses, seven courses had about 850 students in each course. Uh, out of the 858, 48 have attended the exam online. That clearly shows the network, accessibility, all that, uh, even though it's a challenge, but if you are innovative, see, we did not fix an exam like, see, we never, I told my faculty that don't try to conduct offline exam online. It's impossible. You have to be innovative. So you give them 24 hours, give them a paper, okay? And uh, like, you know, in IAC, we give them open books test. Why not, why not hear an open book exam? Sure. Okay. So many innovative things have been tried and we were able to complete all the people examination and we are ready for the convocation. So I was uh, actually, that's congratulations. And I was about to, in fact, you already answered my question. I was about to say that the increased productivity in last three, four months of the lockdown, was it because uh, you didn't have BTEC students in your campus because you were the funds first to send them off. But you yes. just now you just now said that they are already working with the 24-hour offline. offline exam. Exactly. So kudos and, and also, head off. Yeah. Yeah. And also I would like to say, you see, not only undergraduate students are not there. Second is many of the travel we are not performing now because of the see, otherwise would I would have spent uh, almost like three, four times in Delhi. So all that time is available to me. You Absolutely. See, for example. You are, if you had invited me to PGICT to give a talk to your people, I mean, that day, gosh, three days is gone. Three days. Minimum. Yes. Going yes. one day. But today, that is all done in two hours. And I agree cost, with you. Travel cost is zero. I think this should be formalized. Anything. I think this should be formalized and structured for Pan India and maybe around saving uh, energy, time, money and more and more time to productivity. I don't know the people who love to travel, what will they think of this comment? But for me and you, I think we agree that this is a boon. And this is the this is precisely why your campus within that beautiful campus that you described, Green Campus has contributed so much. And your rank, uh, your rank has also gone up and you're of the seventh at both overall and engineering. And uh, we hope that the school of, we're really looking very closely at your school of health thing, which we thought was only a domain of IIT Kharagpur, but I think it is IIT Guwahati which must take lead with your finest uh, mechanical and computer and uh, electrical engineers out there, along with your civil engineering background. I was reading about you 
and we I've already read out and told about told the audience about your so, so we can think of smart hospitals concept coming from a civil engineer which is resistant to earthquakes since you are earthquake. No, no, I will tell you we can develop in six months. Not we don't require much more than that. Technology is there in civil engineering to develop the entire construction in six months. We offered actually a letter was sent to the chief minister of Assam. Give us one of the hospitals. We'll build it on our campus. Three hundred crores. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So, what uh, my, my final question to you is: uh, When are you seeing your BTEC students back? Are they going to come sooner, or this is going to continue? Uh, we we already started uh, welcoming our research scholars and MTech scholars, and uh, they started coming from uh, yesterday, seventh of uh, August, and hopefully by September end, we all our uh, about thousand uh, thousand four hundred students will be back in the campus. Hopefully, if the, no other you know, emergencies come. Uh, the BTEC students, we are not calling them uh, the, right now. Only some of the people who have very difficulty reaching out through the online system. Otherwise, we are uh, starting our next term only completely online on September 4th. So we have actually started uh, giving uh, training, teachers training for to do online way because as I told you, I we are saying that simply you cannot run offline classes online. You have to be innovative in running because you will attention span online is very small. So you are, your classes should be like 25 to 30 minutes, not one hour or 50 yeah. minutes. All that we are trying to do that, readjusting timetables and everything. And September 4th, we are starting online classes for the second, third and fourth year BTEC. But first year BTEC, it is not in our hand because it is JE has to happen. JE exam is scheduled for September 1 to 6. Yeah. September 27th yeah. is the JE advance. Once that is done, we are hoping if all happens, <clears throat> November 1st, we will start the first year beta classes. That also we are thinking of doing online. Great. So I will also keep that in mind because the innovative aspect of our online, we are also continuing for 130 days, putting everybody together, bringing new perspectives, solutions, policy disruptions, at least in thought, in times of thought, thought leadership and in giving ideas. So we will also keep this in mind, how we have to be more innovative uh, in doing this program educational series. There are a lot of comments on Facebook, informative session. Thanks a lot, sir. An excellent comprehensive uh, way of presentation. We didn't know so much about what is happening within IIT, Guwahati. And I will just end with the last question, since you are also busy and uh, you yourself mentioned that the online sessions have to be short. So uh, finally, you mentioned, we saw the good yoga slide that you have. So uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, audience, Rita Isaac, is asking, what is your idea of bringing resilience that you mentioned in your talk by using this yoga uh, format in your IIT? Are you going to be bringing your faculty into it? Are you going to do more, play a bigger role in preventive healthcare? What are your thoughts on it? I, I tell you, we are also, before even NEP announced it, uh, that is National Education Policy 2020, we have actually started Indian Knowledge Systems, a center. Okay, we have announced it. Our board has already approved uh, because I happen to be the board chairman right now, other than the director. I have a dual role to do it. So Indian Knowledge System, wherein yoga and Sanskrit would be introduced because we need to actually, there is a lot of wealth of knowledge in, in India which has to be collated and uh, shown its efficacy and, uh, and also its applications because we have to bring back some of the things which are there in our villages and towns and with some few. So we have to learn and prove that uh, scientific uh, evalu evaluation. We have to uh, set that as an example to the whole country. So I thought, you know, we will start slowly working and it is already there in many of the IITs. Of you know, IIT Bombay has, IIT Delhi has already a center for Indian knowledge systems. We have also started because ours is an young institute. We have also started only just uh, about two months back. But uh, luckily, your national education policy has also given a focus on that. Yes. So yes. That I think will uh, it takes the heat and moves up. Hopefully, we will have a. I hope you. I hope you get a very smart faculty to support in this particular Indian sister program in an evidence based. We have to patient. do that. We have to do that. We have to okay. highlight, identify a faculty who can really help us in that. Thank you very much, Dr. Sitaram, for coming and giving a very good talk. We are indebted to you on behalf of yoga scholars and all the audience across the world and across India, and particularly in 
Punjab region. We are thankful for coming alive to us and sparing time with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I, I request all of you to stay healthy, stay safe, and practice yoga.